Well, hello again. Another little quick video. Uh, the main reason for this one is uh, I've had a gentleman who I was trying to put Railmaster onto his PC and we came across a problem. And the problem is this. This is the disk which is uh, you install it or you can download it, right? But what you've got in here is an activation code and it said it was already in operation. No matter which way you tried it, couldn't do anything. Now, I've, in the past, I, over the years, I've done dozens and dozens where I've changed, taken it off this computer and put it on another, which I know no problem with. But what it is with this thing is until you actually read, I, I haven't read the guide for a long, long while. If I go to here, and go to the guide and go up to the top is that bit there and what it says is that is licensed to you and it is not transferable so if you if, you, if somebody's selling on an e-link with the disc if the disc has not been broken, that's the seal, it's the seal across there, don't touch it. Get it from a reputable place, such as like Hornby. Because you, you've still then got, if you've got this and we've got the e-link, the e-link is okay, no problem. You can swap them around, no problem at all. But with this thing, it means you've got then got payout again for this disc or the, the, the activation code for this. So just beware, if anybody uh, deactivates it and then thinks you can sell it on, you can't. That has been bought by a person and that can't be sold onto anybody else. So just be warned, make sure that the seal is across there when you get this. If not, don't touch it because it won't work. And that, that, that I know now from Railmaster themselves, they've told me that this doesn't work. You can't get it to work. It's, just, it's registered to just one person. Right. So that was the main real reason for this. This uh, is caused a headache for this particular chap. It's now cost him another, it's cost him £70 for this just to get that. That's the license fee. And it's registered. And it's the same with the Pro. If you, you can't sell the Pro on either, you've got to buy a new Pro, which is another 30 quid. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through one or two little bits and pieces as, um, as you know, I've got this, which is my ESU decoder tester. I've actually put a 21 pin in here. I can put 21s in, 8 pins in, Eight, uh, the, the next ones in, I can put anything I want in this thing. And also it's got a little motor there and it shows you which it's going. It's got lights there to tell you uh, the function keys. It's the best thing you can ever buy. Now when I do my lo locos and when put them ready, the loco itself, I've, uh, downstairs I've got a piece of track which is for DCC, uh, for DC, sorry, DC. And I can run my train round and run it in that way around. But when it comes to the decoders, I always put them in this. Set it all up on here, and then plug it into the uh, loco, and it should work first time. Because what happens is, if there's some contact wrong in your loco, and you've got that, and you put this in, and it doesn't work, you don't know whether it's a loco or whether it's a decoder. So just be beware. So I can use this now. Of course, we can use Railmaster for doing this. Now, that's okay to a certain point. Now, I've got a thing called JMRI, which I've done a couple of videos on. And if I come out of here now for a second and go to here, this is my this is my JMRI. Yeah. These are not all my locos, of course. Look. But what you do is you set them up and it tells you in here, tells you what the ID address is. 
you put your own little picture in, tells you what the model is, there again it's going there again, who the manufacturer of, of the loco is, what the name of the train is, such as like this, City of Crew or a Reba train, and then you bit on here, which is basically just when you actually install it on here. So you've got this rotor in here. So what we're going to do, on here, first of all, I've got, this is my Railmaster program track, and this is my GMRI track. I've just connected it across here, but I'll show you something else in a second. So what we're going to do, we want to know what this is. Right. So what we're going to do, we go up to here and go to New Locos and you get this. Down here and it says read the type of decoder. So you click on that. Here you go in then. And what it's come up with. It, it's still working but that's the way it is. It's a Hornby one, right? And it comes up with Hatton's decoders. So if I just go to here, it's, it's an actually a four function one there, which is that. It's a two digit address, which I'm going to use. I always do two, but you can put in four there as well. And up here now, what we're going to do now is we're going to take that bit off and we're going to put in, I mean, take it all out, sorry. Right. I'm going to name this this particular loco or uh, test it, right? And we're going to save it. Done. Now we come out of here now. If I come down this row here, you can put these alphabetically. You can put them any way you want. I also these uh, so I can I can change this. Go to there. And I can put them in one to you know seventy five. This might be. But down you go right down here, and there's the tester there, right? So what we do now is we go to click on that. We now it's on program mode here. I now go to programming there. I can go to the basic and it tells me it is two digits and it, that two of one is address is three, which it would be. There's the motor, it tells you this. And then you've got other things here. And what you go to here, go to speed that one there, right? And what you can do with this is I can actually go to here, take that one out there, change that to, we could say 10, like that, and write it. Done. Now if you do the CVs on Railmaster, the 255 CVs, it'll take about two hours. This does it in about a minute, it'll go through all. I'm not going to do it, but that's how you can do it. And that's all you can do, you can change them all. Now, one blessing with this thing is, is five and six, which are the uh, speed ones. Now, I don't think this has got speed table in, because it's a, might have you. No, it's, there you are. So that is the speed table. And that's going from zero to 255. So that train will just go straight off like that, except for the acceleration generation, of course. But what you can do with this, you can actually alter this down here like this, and then go to here and match ends like that. You can then save it, just OK it and save it. And what it will do then is it will slow the train down. Now my class 68 over there, if I put them on normally, they go around like loopy. But as it happens, I change those CVs and all through the speed table. Uh, and it works perfect now. That's about those two are actually perfectly matched because I'm doing through a um, speedometer. And that's how you can do that. So if I just come off here, just close it. Right, so it's back again, right? So that's how you can do it. Now, what I'm going to do now, so now you've got this as he says now, and it's, it's still connected in. If I now go to throttle here, down here, there's the throttle. I turn the system on, which is that. If I now go here, I'm, that's forward, that's reverse. I can use my mouse to do this, so we'll do this, which is not, not going because it's... 
I know why. If I just come out of there for a minute, go back on it again, go back to programming, and go to CVs there. That is one which is there, just write it again. Just come out of there again now for a minute. Now, if I now go back to the th throttle, turn it on and do this. There. Yeah. I can stop it like that. I can do the function keys, which it lights up the the little lights if you actually just see it there, just on there, the third one along there. But also what I can do with that is if I actually go into the labels here and on zero I put on lights like that. I'll just put just that right. So these are locked, so this is the latching thing. So I just do that. I come out of there now and save and close. And I go back and find that, that tester again on there. Go to the throttle. If I now go to lights, which is that one there. If I go to this one now, there's forward. And if I now go reverse, reverse. So you can test your decoders. It does sound ones as well, so you can test all your sound ones. But that is how that works. Now what I'm going to do with that, I'm just going to unplug that now because I don't want that in there for now. I'm going to put this little train on on here just show you how it works. You've not got a when it's on there you can program it and run it at the same time but you don't have to change tracks. So on that on there now if I go down and find NCB Shunter which is there I now go to put on program mode again put on throttle now if I now go forward, which is going to do, and just with my wheel on, on my mouse, I can make it do that. Stop it. Come back the other way. Or I can go faster. Or I can go slower. So I can test my trains that way around. And it's, it's so easy to do. There's a lot, a lot of complicated things in this thing, but the thing is, is I've got a record of all my locos here, or most of them. Some of my special trains I haven't got in here because I, I, I don't want to alter them at all. But if you if, say you go in here and say the four functions, there's a Hornby one there, Coronation there, which is that one there. You can go into the programs there. You can go to sound, which is up there. I can go to basic speed control. Now, one of the things is, with this thing, it doesn't like normal Hornby decoders or TTS decoders. You can't read them. So it, it is a bit awkward that way around. But that's just a little gizmo of uh, things I can actually do with that. Right. So... What this part is now is just going to be showing you around some of the bits and pieces I've got. Um, one of the things, if I go on to here now, which is my station here, there, here I have got a level crossing. And if I just click it on by this, and that is operated there by this signal. So we do this. That does that. I've also, over there, I've got a water tower, which is a motorised one. So when I've got steam trains there, the little uh, thing with the hose on goes out, fills the train up and comes back again. Uh, that's one another little thing I've got there. I've got all sorts of little gadgets around this thing. Um, but what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you one of my local runs. Now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be fetching this out taking it just over the cross in there then this one will come out and come round to the station then go back again 
into the station. This will, the 158 will start up again and go back into where it just come from there. And then this one will actually go, sorry, this one, this will do its, its particular one. I'll tell you about that one in a minute. So one thing is, uh, is every, most of my trains I've told you about have all got programs. They all do certain things. That's where all these little trains are all around my track. But instead of just pressing one and doing that, I can actually do a schedule or an automated system. And down there at the bottom is what it is. Now, these are all the ones I've actually just done. So I'll just click these little boxes there like that. And that one there as well. Now, the, what you've got to be aware of here, as I've told you before on this, this thing kicks off at 11 o'clock. So if that clock were, went up to 12, up to just for 11 o'clock and I went downstairs to make a cuppa, this lock kicks up on its own. So you've always got to make sure that those little ticks are out. So we just take that and click that. It is now ready. Now what's going to happen is you the first one, then the second one. So what, you'll, you'll see it in a second, but I, down here I've got this, and this is a little program. All it does is it, it changes that clock. Without having to go and try and fiddle it, I can just press this. Now watch. 10.59, now at 11 o'clock, when this thing starts. Come on. That's the 158 now starting up. The points of trains. Come out. As I said before, I, I, I do deal with loads and loads of people from all over the, all over the world. I've just done one with a chap in um, South Africa. And got him all working. I'm now dealing with one at the moment in Thailand. Uh, I've had one session with him, but he's, there's this problem at the moment with this. So that's uh, done that bit there. Just, you just heard the, the train sound come on. This will come out in a minute. There we go. So I can just sit here and watch these things do this all on their own. But say one of the things you really need if you want, any, you know, the best result from me is to have Team Viewer on your on your computer. Then I can link to you and go sort all the different problems that there is in Railmaster. I've done this for ten years, so uh, most of most of I think everything that's been wrong with it, I've had. No, it stops now. Now what it'll do now, it'll now go back again to where it just come from, in the station, over there. <clears throat> there we go. <coughs> sound will go off points will change at the back there that's it, that's gone this will now start up and go back to where it's just come from it can take time to get these, these locos to run in programs some work perfect and some or a nightmare. I have one or two trains which I don't even put on program because every time I do it, the train doesn't stop where it's, where it's supposed to go. And 
I spent hours and hours trying to do it and didn't do it. So this is now going to go back to its little home. Just there. That's that. The points will change. There back. The driver gets the nut, starts it up by 29. <clears throat> now, one thing with this one is, as, a, as you know, CV3 is acceleration, CV4 is deceleration. The lower the number, the quicker the train. So, if you've got this train set, this is set at 50. If this train was set at 50 and I press cruise, this will go off like a bullet. Whereas what it does now, because it's pulling all wagons, it will not go straight off. Now, the light will come off, off here. You just see the, the light here. You just can see it. There we are. It's now ready to go. I say if you, you can call me at any time, I'm normally always here. Uh, any queries at all about Railmaster, um, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, we're still waiting for the updates and everything else, but so you know, it's, so it's still going around slowly. It's going to start building up, and then when it gets to about there, it'll then go on full speed or 50 mile an hour. It's, it's loud, yeah. There you go. Here it comes. At the same time, I'm going to put on my high neck. There we go. Slowing down, that one is. There we go. Perfect. Now what it'll do now, it'll actually turn off and the lights will go off and you hear the cab go again where the driver gets out. Right. That's that one. Now I'll just show you this little one. This is my little Rushton. As you can see by my thumb how big this thing is. You really need to have this connected to it because the wheels are so small and when it gets to points like this you have problems. So if I just do this and do this, away it comes. This is set at 10 mile an hour. Put it in reverse. Put it down to some mode. Let it come down here. Oh, done. So that is basically it. So tell me to say if you want me at any time, I'm on 01782 302194. My email address is there as well. There is a little box under where the comments is, a little blue thing there. If anyone who wishes to donate, I'd be most grateful. Uh, but as I said before, if you've got any any queries about Ramos or how to do things, just give me a call. Don't be afraid. Don't think as you know, you, you think of it itself as an idiot. Uh, I've had to go through all this over the many years, but by talking to people and having their problems, I've seen all the problems. Whereas normally, most of the problems you never see in a lifetime sometimes. But that is the thing is, mine runs no problem at all. I have no problem with this thing at all. So, once again, thank you for your uh, viewing and I will see you again soon. Bye.